When most people think of sharks, they imagine the white shark or some other species with an intimidating mouth full of teeth. Most will also recognize the largest shark, which is the whale shark, a charismatic gentle giant with beautiful white spots all over its body. Nonetheless, most forget that the whale shark is only one among three other filter feeding shark giants of the sea. Meet the Megamouth, one of the rarest, most elusive, and sluggish sharks, and also one of the coolest fish discoveries from the 20th century. The Megamouth was first discovered by accident in 1976 off of the coast of Oahu in Hawaii after becoming entangled in a U.S. Navy research vessel's cables. Despite using a similar filter feeding style to the basking shark and the whale shark, scientists have determined that the Megamouth is not closely related to these species. In fact, the Megamouth is so unique that it is the only existing species in the Megacasmidae family. As you can see, it gets its name from its large mouth, which accounts for 28% of its total body length. By comparison, the basking shark, which is the second largest shark, has a mouth that is roughly 17% of its total body length. Despite being an elusive fish, it is easily recognizable by its brownish black color, white underbelly, wide bulbous head, and rubbery lips, which typically expose a white shiny band on the upper lip. The Megamouth has several rows of tiny teeth, from which only three of these are fully functional. The Megamouth can reach up to 7 meters in size, which is nearly as long as two basketball nets. Adult females tend to be larger than males, averaging at approximately 5 meters in length, whereas males typically reach 4 meters. As adults, they can weigh over a ton, which is as much as the weight of three grand pianos, a walrus, or a saltwater crocodile. Most people think of sharks as fast, agile swimmers. However, these sharks are awkward, slow swimmers, reaching a top speed of just 1.3 miles per hour. Though its full distribution is poorly known, it is believed to be a wide-ranging species, occurring in tropical and temperate areas of all major oceans. Most sightings have occurred in the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans in countries like Taiwan, Japan, and the Philippines. They can be found in both coastal and oceanic waters ranging from 5 to 1,500 meters deep. That's three times the height of the CN Tower in Toronto, Canada. It was previously believed that this shark was only a deep water species. However, recently, researchers have found that they spend time in shallow waters at night and in deeper waters during the day. They believe that these movements are linked to feeding, as their favorite food, which is krill, moves to the surface at night when there is less light, while avoiding predators by staying in deeper waters during the day. Speaking of food, as planktivores, they feed on shrimp, primarily, and copepods, but they have also been found to enjoy deepwater jellyfish here. Though much is known about the feeding strategy of the other two filter feeding sharks, it remains an unobserved mystery for the megamouth. Basking sharks collect plankton by expanding their mouth wide open and swimming through the water, a method called ram feeding. By contrast, whale sharks primarily capture their food in bursts by inhaling amid a large cloud of plankton. Based on its mouth size, flabby body structure, and lack of strong jaw muscles, scientists suspect that the megamouth may simply open its mouth wide, swallow lots of krill, and then slowly release any ingested water from its gills. It was previously believed that they could emit light from their mouths to lure prey in, similar to the use of bioluminescence by the famous deepwater anglerfish. Recently, scientists have proven that this theory is wrong, finding that the light that was being emitted from the shark's mouth was actually coming from the bioluminescent plankton that they were eating, which was reflecting light off the white band in the shark's upper lip. Despite its very large size, the megamouth is part of the diet of other species, such as the sperm whale and the cookie cutter shark. Researchers have observed attacks in the wild, and some megamouths have shown marks and scars consistent with attacks from both of these predators. What is so exciting about this species is that we still have more questions than answers. Since its discovery nearly four decades ago, there have only been roughly 270 sightings worldwide. Often any data that is obtained about this shark is due to them being washed up on shore or entangled in fishing nets, which is one of the known threats that they face today. The species is listed under least concern by the IUCN Red List following its last assessment in 2018. So much remains to be uncovered when it comes to determining how many there are in the ocean, where they are, and how long they live, among so many other questions. These are gaps that prove to be inspiring for the next generation of scientists and megamouth enthusiasts. For more videos on marine species, subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching!